Hello, my name's James Patterson, and in this video tutorial, we're gonna learn how to create this fantastic explosion effect. So let's just escape out of bridge there, then we'll enter the main Photoshop window. So first of all, we're gonna create the explosion on a black background, then pop it into another image. So let's go to File, New, and let's just choose an A4 size with a uh, black background, so we'll choose background color and we have black set as our background color down here. Let's hit OK. And then first of all, we want to create a new layer. So let's click the create new layer icon here in the layers panel. And then we want to grab our paintbrush over here in the tools panel. We'll have white as our foreground color. We'll choose a nice soft edge circular brush. So something like this one. And then let's use the bracket keys left or right to resize the brush. So which is a nice large size. And we just want to paint quickly to create a few different size blobs. I'm just using the left bracket key to resize my blobs as I go. So that looks pretty good. And the next thing we want to do is to create some spikes, some blurred spikes that kind of come out of these blobs. And we'll do this using the smudge tool, which can be found in the tools panel over here behind the Blur and Sharpen tool. So let's select the Smudge tool. And again, we can use our bracket keys to resize our brush. And if I just click and drag outwards, you can see how this is giving me a nice smudged spike that's kind of protruding out from these blobs. So you find that the Smudge tool sometimes takes a while to load up. So I'm just gonna continue drawing these spikes like this. So we want these spikes to really cover the whole shape. So let's pause the video. I'm gonna to go to another image where I've completed this effect. Okay, so here's my completed smudge effect. Next thing we need to do is to burn some areas of this whiteness here. So let's go and grab the burn tool over here in the tools panel. And then we'll set the range to highlights. Let's bring the exposure up to about 15. And then let's click on the brush preset picker here. We want to choose a random brush to get a, a nice kind of spatter effect. So we can click on the play icon here and let's choose special effects brushes. Let's click a pen to pen those brushes to the end here. And then we'll choose the maple leaf brush, which I think works quite well. This gives us a kind of a random burn effect. Let's just zoom in to see how this is working. And you can see if I very quickly whiz over these blobs here, how this is giving me some definition to the white areas. It's giving some depth to these shapes and it's beginning to, to take the shape of a kind of cloud that we will then turn into an explosion. It's whizzing over this area here. You can be a bit more precise about this. That looks okay, I think. Maybe we'll bring the exposure up slightly and just whiz over a couple more times. Okay, and I'm quite happy with that. Next, let's create a new layer. And we'll use the brush tool again with white as our foreground color. We want to create some debris that's kind of flying out of this explosion. So with the brush tool selected, let's go up to the brush preset picker and click on the play icon, and this time we'll load some dry media brushes. Let's click append, and then let's choose maybe this one here at the bottom, and using the bracket keys again to resize, let's zoom in a little bit closer, and you can see I can just paint a few different kind of bits of debris flying out away from the cloud here. To speed things up a bit, we can click on the brush panel icon here to toggle the brush panel on. And then let's check scattering. Bring the scattering up a little bit. And let's check shape dynamics and work with the angle jitter a bit. And then if we click on brush tip shape, we can adjust the spacing. Let's bring it up to about 90. So these settings will depend on your brush and the size of the brush and, and the size of the image. So it's worth just experimenting with different things. Let's uncheck texture and dual brush. 
and transfer and smoothing just so we have that kind of effect. Then you can see if I paint, I can resize my brush as I go, I get more of a random effect. I don't have to paint every single little piece of rectangle in. It kind of does half the work for me by having these brush settings. Okay, so I'll come back to this when I finish this debris effect. And here we have the finished debris effect, and we want to merge it down with our layer below. So let's press Command or Control and E to merge those layers into one. So we have all our painting on one layer here. And I think we could possibly do with a little bit more burning in. So let's grab the burn tool. I'm just going to whiz over the areas in the middle of the clouds here. Let's bring the exposure down slightly. Give us some really dark areas in here. Okay, so I think that's looking good. Now we want to duplicate this layer, so let's press Command and Control and J to duplicate it. And we need to turn this top layer yellow. So we can do this by going to Image Adjustments hue saturation and if we click colorize here then we can change the hue slider to give us a nice yellow color let's bring the lightness down a little bit and you can see how this is working so i think somewhere about there will look good let's hit ok to apply that and then we need to change the blend mode of this top layer to hard light there we go. I think maybe let's uh, just re-enter Q saturation. We can do this by pressing Command and Control and U. And I just want to boost the saturation of those yellows a little bit. So let's bring it up to about 60 there, like that. Let's hit OK to apply that. Let's press Command and Control and J to duplicate our yellow top layer again. And then let's press Command and Control and U to re-enter hue saturation. And Let's check colorize again. We want to red color this time. So the default for colorize is set to red. So that's actually looking pretty good. Maybe we could bring the saturation up again. And also maybe bring the lightness down a touch, like so. Let's hit OK to apply that. And let's change the blend mode of this top layer to color burn. And you can see how that's really giving us that nice ex explosion effect. Next, let's select our three cloud layers. So let's press and hold shift and then click on our bottom of the three layers there. Then we use the move tool. Let's check auto select and show transform controls. And you can see I have my explosion street image open here. So let's go back to my explosion. And with those three layers selected, we can just click and drag with our move tool up to the explosion street tab, then down into the image, then release the mouse button. And you can see that's put our explosion on top of that image. Uh, we can then, if I just click on one of these bounding box corners here, and then we can right click within the image and choose flip horizontal, because we want our explosion kind of coming out of these windows here. And then we can resize it and place it wherever we want. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching.